Good evening, Edgewood High School and community. Welcome to the Edgewood High School relaunch meeting. My name is Doug Gagan. I'm the building principal. Uh, we are doing this via Zoom for our participants and then for the whole Edgewood community through Facebook Live. Families, you can use Facebook Live to list questions. I'm going to share my screen here in a second and we'll start the presentation. But before I do, I'd like to welcome our panelists. We have Eric Pletz, who is our art teacher, who's part of our building safety team. Miss Rachel Anderson, who's an English teacher, who's part of our building safety team. Scott Clemens, who is a special ed teacher and part of our building safety team. Uh, Miss pa Mrs. Pam Pratt, who is our district communications director. Uh, Mrs. Katie Erb, who is our Butler Tech teacher and part of our safety team. Mrs. Beth Birchwell, who is our district school nurse. Um, Mrs. Lori Lyman, who's assistant principal for grades 10 through 12. And Mrs. Tanya Euler, who is our high school nurse. So I wanna welcome you to this meeting. Uh, I do also wanna point out that we have a frequently asked questions document that was released last week that may answer a lot of your questions. And at the end of this presentation, if you have additional questions, you can reach us um, on our Facebook page with questions or email an administrator. Okay, so here's our presentation. Where does we start here? Okay. So health and wellness, uh, Mrs. Beth Birchwell will lead us in this. Beth, can you take it away, please? Yes, I can. We're gonna start off just talking about the nurse's office. If a student is symptomatic in a classroom, that means they have fever, cough, body aches, feeling ill, the teacher will call the secretary in the office. An administrator will go to the classroom, take the student's temperature and escort them to the isolation room. We're doing this to avoid that student stopping or meeting up with someone else in the hallway. We want them to have a direct route to the isolation room. Um, if we are notified of a confirmed COVID-19 case, then, and that means laboratory confirmed by the health department, then anyone that was around that student or staff member um, within a six foot radius for a period of more than 15 minutes they will also be notified. And that notification will come from the health department. Um, individuals may need to quarantine uh, up to 14 days. Um, the infectious period is usually two to 14 days. So at the longest 14 days, depending on um, you know, what the quarantine, what called for the quarantine. Um, all classrooms, cafeteria, and buses will have assigned seating. The reason that we do that is so that we always know who is sitting around a person who may in fact test positive. And like I said, we will work with the Butler County Health Department. Um, they will guide us and help us with contact tracing. They will reach out not only to staff members, but also families if there is a positive case and they will call you personally to um, give you their best recommendations if this in indeed does occur. Um, health hygiene is very important to stop the spread and we are going to have a display of poster guidance with proper hygiene um, in the classrooms, the restrooms, the halls, and students will be instructed about proper hygiene practices and that'll be reinforced and that includes hand washing for at least 20 seconds you know, coughing into your elbow, using a tissue, and then immediately using hand sanitizer after you would cough or sneeze into a tissue. Those are some examples of what we're talking about. Also, school announcements will include training and reminders on hand washing and our best practices that we can use to um, keep COVID at bay. Um, also very important is that if your student 
or for staff members too, if they wake up feeling ill that day, they are to stay home, not to report to school, but just make a call in. Um, parents should be taking temperatures daily at home before the student arrives to school. Anyone with a fever of 100 or greater should stay home and recommend a call to your doctor um, so that you can follow their best recommendations. And depending on if there are other symptoms present, uh, they may or may not recommend testing at that time. Uh, also, there will be additional thermometers in the office if that's necessary. Uh, the nurse has extra thermometers too. There will be one in the regular clinic where we will see um, students that present for medications or treatments, and then there will be one in the isolation clinic uh, where students will report to be isolated until parent pickup. So there will be a thermometer in both of those so temperatures can be taken there as well. Um, like I said, students or staff who have a fever, um, they will be asked to be returned home and picked up by a family member and we would like that um, to be done as soon as possible to alleviate any exposure that may happen. Um, they may return to school if fever free for 72 hours. That means um, if your child goes home with a fever, um, they have to stay out for 72 hours without Tylenol or Motrin or things like that to bring the fever down. We don't want you to give those and then send them to school. Now, you know, if testing is happening and someone has to be tested, we recommend that a student stay home until the results of those tests are known. The health department will be alerted anytime anyone is tested, but we uh, are requiring actually that you stay home until the results of those tests are made known. Also, we are restricting non-essential visitors. Um, we are limiting volunteers parents, presenters, and outside organizations that come into the building. If it is required that someone enter the building, um, we will ask them a few questions, also take their temperature before we allow them to enter and uh, possibly be a source of exposure. So we will know who is in the building and they will be asked some questions and also have their temperature taken before they come inside um, to report. If you as a parent need to come into the building, there's going to be an area to drop things off. We ask that if you need to come in that you make a call first. If you need to see the nurse for something like medications or otherwise, we ask that you call to set up a time so that the nurse can meet you at the door if there's something that you need to do for your student medically. All right, thank you Beth for all that information. Uh, next, the next topic is masks. Facial covering or masks are critical to preventing the spread of the virus from person to person. <clears throat> Excuse me. Facial covering is any material that covers an individual's nose, mouth, and chin, and it must be school appropriate. Exemptions from wearing a facial covering will follow the guidance as stated in the Ohio Department of Health Director's Order. And you can find that on the Ohio Department of Health, and we can make that available if you have questions. If you have questions about this, please contact either myself or Lori Lyman for grades 10 and 12, or Alex Ehlers for grades 9 and 11. How many masks should a child have? Every child has to have a mask at school. It is recommended that students have two extra masks with them and no sharing of masks. We will have a mask break that will occur outside during the day at specific times. So we, we understand that students may not be used to wearing a mask for seven, eight hours a day. So we will have a mask break outside. Students will be socially distanced. And at that time, they can take off their mask. But during the school day, while they're in classes, they must wear a mask. Before school. This time is from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Students need to check, excuse me, students need to check their temperatures before they depart for school. The building will open up for all students at 7.35 a.m. 
Students who want to enter early need administrative approval, so please contact one of the administrators for that, and we'll report to the cafeteria. Buses will arrive at 7.40 a.m., and students who are not eating breakfast should report to their first period class by 7.45 a.m. Instruction starts at 8, but we will do the Pledge of Allegiance at 7.55 a.m. every day, and instruction will start at 8. We will offer a staggered start, and what that means is grades 9 and 10 students will have a first period class or study hall. Grades 11 and 12 students will either have the option of a late start period, a study hall, or a class. We are encouraging most juniors and seniors who have transportation to have a late start. Students that do not have transportation will either be in a class or a study hall. The junior and senior study hall will be in the gym for first period. All second bell late start juniors and seniors will check in at the event entrance by the gym no earlier than 10 minutes, 10 minutes before the start of their second period class, which is 8.45 a.m. All third period late start students will check in at the main office no earlier than 10 minutes before the start of their third period class, which is 9.30 a.m. The school day, so what does a school day look like? We have modified our schedule. Typically, we've had a seven period academic day with a 20 minute edge time or homeroom. We've shifted to a 40 minute instructional time, eight period day. This allows us more classes and allows us to uh, reduce class size to a number that includes adequate spacing. So if you look at this bell schedule, we have bells one, two, three, and four that are 40 minutes in length. And then the fifth bell is longer. It's 60 minutes in length and that allows for also a 30 minute lunch. So that's a 90 minute period. Eighth bell is 45 minutes, but, but students who have their own transportation will leave at 2.40 and bus riders will leave at 2.45. Hallways will be, a, will be a two way with a dividing line in the middle. Some districts are doing one way hallways. We decided that we could not do that. Um, and we are allowing basically hallways with a dividing line in the middle. Students will get five minute passing bells. S students need to go directly to their next class after the, their bell ends. And students must also keep in mind the social distancing protocols in the hallway. Lockers will not be used for the 2020-2021 school year. Most of our students in high school do not use their lockers. Um, some classes have a, a lot of online materials or handouts instead of textbooks but we are requiring um, students to have all their materials with them in book bags. The snack vending machines uh, have been removed and there's no eating outside the cafeteria or the auxiliary gym. Beverage machines that have water and other drinks are available, still available throughout the day. Water fountains are also available, but we encourage students to bring water bottles to school and by the water fountains, there will be a hand sanitizing stations for all students. Classrooms. Students are not allowed to line up at the end of class. They need to stay in their seating area. Desks will be adequately spaced between each person. Masks must be worn at all times and must follow the dress code. Each classroom will be provided with all supplies needed, including disinfectant and towels and the rooms will be cleaned, cleaned as needed during the day and cleaned at night. Hand, sanitizing, hand sanitizers are available in each classroom. Uh, we are using a product called GermStop, which is, which is a antimicrobial surface that helps clean and sanitize um, the classrooms. That will be applied every 30 days. The first application was done in the beginning of August and the next application will be done when students are not in school. Where classroom doors are to remain open unless the school goes into a lockdown. So all classroom doors will be open and that is to uh, encourage air circulation throughout the building. Lab instruction. So we have many of our classes, our science classes have lab. Some of our Butler Tech courses have lab. And so lab instruction courses will be demonstration based unless a lab teacher can submit 
a plan to, to the administration where they prove that all the equipment is cleaned and sanitized and safe for students to use throughout the day. Physical education classes may be outside. And let me be outside and all equipment will be cleaned before and after use. All activities will be designed and implemented to maintain social distancing guidelines. So we're encouraging gym classes to be outside. Um, while students are actively engaged in, in gym courses, they do not have to wear a mask. Restrooms. Only three students at a time in the restroom. Teachers limit the bathroom use during class time. Students will use a QR code as they pass to the bathroom. So each classroom will have this QR code. A student takes a picture of the QR code with their cell phone, and then that will allow them in and out of the class and give us a record of who is using the restroom at certain times. Music programs and choir programs must practice outside while they're performing, singing, or marching, and they must be 10 feet away. These are guidelines that we received from the Butler County um, Department on Health. So band and choir programs, if they are playing their instrument or singing, must be done outside. Computer carts. Each computer cart will have wipes. Students will be assigned a computer before using it. Uh, students must wipe down the computers before and after the use. Breakfast and lunch. Food items will be individually contained. All cafeteria services will be disinfected between serving sessions. Students will be spread out as much as possible. Students will stay in their seats for the entire meal time. Staff will move around with trash bins. So staff will have trash bins. Students will, once we come to their table, will throw away their food in the trash bin. Uh, students verbalize their lunch pin so they're not entering in their code every time. Uh, avoid, we're asking students to avoid sharing of food items and utensils. All the utensils will be uh, individually wrapped, assigned seating, and no more than four students at a table. Masks must be worn except when actively eating or drinking. So as students enter into the cafeteria, they must wear their mask. When they leave the cafeteria, they must wear their mask as well. Mr. Clemens will talk about the diagram of the cafeteria. So to help with the social distancing going to lunch, because that becomes a congested area, we're going to now line the students up coming from the gym and then through the side of the cafeteria and then into the food service through the green lines. Uh, from there, the blue lines will take them to their assigned seats that they will, they will choose in those first couple of days. Some students will eat in the cafeteria and then other ones will eat in the ox gym uh, next, to the, uh, next to the top of the gym. And then when we exit out, those in the ox gym will exit back out of the ox gym doors back to their classrooms and the students that eat lunch in the cafeteria will exit out the cafeteria doors uh, back to their classroom. And those will be staggered times also to help with congestion and students uh, all getting in one area. And then the line will be marked areas, the social distance while they wait uh, to get in line to get their food. These are diagrams of the cafeteria now uh, with the spacing. We took out tables. Uh, and these, the round tables have four chairs to them. And then in the ox gym, there are some of the square tables. In the ox gym, those will seat three at those tables. So the students in the ox gym will eat there, and then they will exit out those doors to the side of the ox gym back into the event entrance hallway. And then we was able to put the round tables in there. So there are some tables in there that have the four and then the square ones will have three. Thank you, Mr. Clemens. Students will self-select the table on the first day of school. Um, so they will have a seat next week if there's letters A through K on Monday and Tuesday. 
and that same seat that they have on Monday will be their seat on Tuesday. Then the next part of the alphabet will eat on Thursday and Friday, and they'll have assigned seats for those two days. But then the first full day of school is September 8th, and that is where we will allow students to self-select their students for the quarter. We are not having students change seats until the end of each quarter. Uh, like Mr. Clemens said, that there are four students at the round tables and three students at the other tables. Uh, the cafeteria and the oxygen will be used for lunch and no deliveries of food to Edgewood High School. After school. All juniors and seniors who request an additional period of late start early release will typically have an eighth bell early release if it fits with their schedule. Those students who have early release, so let's say they're a student that has bells two through seven and eighth bell, they get to leave early, must leave the building. Students who are participating in early release late start must complete permission slip for school year on final forms. The very first day we are allowing students to participate in early release or late start, but also the final forms must be completed. If you have a junior or senior who has transportation issues or will be riding the bus and not participating in early release or late start, there's an opt out fun function on that final forms slip. After school, car riders are dismissed at 2.40 p.m. That is anyone who drives or a younger sibling who rides with an older sibling or a car rider, uh, they'll be dismissed at 2.40. Bus riders will be dismissed at 2.45 p.m. Students waiting on a ride will have to wait outside at the main entrance and social distance until their ride arrives. All students except those staying for after school activities are to exit the building immediately after school. So we cannot have students congregate at school Many of the questions that people may have can be found on our Edgewood High School Back to School FAQ. You can find it on our district website, our high school website. And as I click on it, it is a 15 page document that has questions and answers from um, administration and um, Pam Pratt. Um, and this is a helpful resource. So I wanna thank everyone for participating in this Facebook Live event. Um, now is a time that we can answer any questions. Mrs. Lyman, do you have a, a bunch of questions that, stu that students or our families have? Not at this time. Okay, we'll give it a second. Doug, this is Pam. I do see a couple of questions that have come up. Okay. The first one is, will there be an increase in unexcused absences in the event that we need to keep a child home for other things involving these symptoms? Yes, we anticipate that more students will be out of school. Um, all of our teachers are trained on Google Classroom and their materials will be accessible via Google Classroom. So if your son or daughter are sick, will there be they an can access that. In... Another question, Doug, is what if a family member living with a student tests positive, but not the student? Does the entire class still need to quarantine? Okay. So according to what Beth said at the very beginning, it is the exposure, so it's 15 minutes in a classroom, and if a student is less than six feet away, then we will give that information to um, the health department and they will be contacting those individuals. Thank you. And the third question is, will students get to pick where they are assigned to sit at lunch? Yes, students will get to pick where they're assigned to sit during lunch. Um, but once they pick their seat, they need to pick wisely because they will have that seating partner for the entire quarter. We will allow them to change seats at the quarter. And this is due to contact tracing. We need to make sure that we know where students are all throughout the day. Lori, are there any other questions that you see? 
I'm on the live comment section. I don't have any there. Pam, Mrs. Pratt, do you have any more questions? I am not seeing any at this point. Um, excuse me. Doug, is there anything that you would want to add as it relates to backpacks and those with rollers versus not? Um, like a, a backpack with a roller? Correct. If those would be permitted or not permitted? Yes, those are permitted. I, I don't see a problem with those as of now. If there is a problem, we would notify the parents. But as of now, that should be fine. All right, if there's no more questions, I'd like to thank everybody for participating in our Facebook Live event. I will remind families that we will post this to YouTube by tomorrow uh, at noon. But uh, thank you, and we are excited to welcome your families back to Edgewood High School as we start the 2020-21 school year. Have a good night. Bye. I'm gonna end the recording.